All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the advanced filtering functions in Excel. In order to get to the menu where you use it, we're going to click on the Data tab, and it's here under Advanced. But before we click on it, we have some setting up to do. First thing I recommend that you do is to add a few blank lines at the top above your data. So I'm going to left click and drag down here about five lines. Then I'm going to right click on one of these numbers and click Insert. The reason why I'm doing this is right over here on the top left, I'm going to put our filtering criteria. And if you put it in the same area as where the data is, sometimes the criteria that you just filtered in can get hidden. So having it above your data, I think helps out. So now we're going to type a couple of these column names that we want to filter on. So let's suppose we want to possibly filter on make. And I recommend copying and pasting those titles so that you don't accidentally make any typos. That can add some complications where it's not going to work correctly. Let's say perhaps model, horsepower, and let's say how much fuel you can put in the gas tank. And let's go ahead and put a couple of filtering criteria in here. To start off, let's suppose that all we wanted to do was look at the Chevrolets. So again, I'll copy and paste that. Now, to get the advanced filter to start going, first, make sure that your active cell, the one with the little box around it, is in the data. So click anywhere in your block of data, click Advanced, and see that Excel automatically recognizes where the data is in G6 to X99. Now let's move over here so we can see where our filtering criteria is. That's what Excel calls criteria range here. And so let's click in that criteria range box and let's highlight all four of these cells. And let's click OK. And so what you see is now Excel is only showing us all the data for the Chevrolets. Now let's go back and let's add some more criteria. Let's add something here under say horsepower. If we add something in the same line as Chevrolet, Excel treats that as an AND. So if we want all the cars that are Chevrolet AND, say have a horsepower over 120, then over here in the horsepower, we'll type greater than 120. And now we need to update our filter. So let's go to Advanced and let's click OK. So now it's filtered out a couple of those cars that had low horsepower. So since we have Chevrolet and horsepower in the same row, it's going to make sure that all the cars meet both of those criteria. Now here's some of the more advanced things that you can do. You can add things in a separate row. And anything you put in a separate row below is going to be an OR criterion. So let's clear our filter by hitting the clear button right here. And let's suppose that we want everything that is a Chevrolet with over 120 horsepower or uh, also Dodges. So let me copy that and paste that up here. And so now let's, again, before you ever click this advanced filter button, click in the data. Otherwise, you're going to have to keep telling Excel where the data are. So click advanced. Again, it recognizes where the data are because we clicked there. And then it thinks the criteria range is A1 to D2 still. So we're going to have to click there and update that. So A1 through D3 now. And now it should give us all the Chevys that have more than 120 horsepower and all the Dodges. There you go. So it's all the cars that are either Chevys with more than 120 or the Dodges, since that's in a separate line. And we could keep expanding our criteria range to add more AND conditions by putting them in the same row, or more OR conditions by adding separate rows down here. So what if we wanted all the makes of cars that were not Buicks? Then the symbol in Excel for not is a less than and a greater than sign right next to each other. And then just type the thing that you don't want to see right next to it. And then if we click in the data, go to advanced. And we have our criteria as A1 and A2 here. Hit OK. And you see that the Buicks have disappeared. Another interesting kind of filter that you can 
put in is what if you wanted to search for say part of a term? Let me show you what I mean. Suppose you were interested in all of the models of cars here that have the number 300 in it. There's a Lexus ES 300 and an SC 300. For some reason you just wanted to filter on that. Then under model, if you want to do partial words, you can do star 300 star. Again, click in the data, advanced filter. Now our filter range we want to do is B1 and B2. Go to OK. And now we see those three cars that have the number 300 in the model name. One last trick let me show you. Let's clear the filters here. You can also use repeats of the same column header. Suppose we wanted HP twice. What we might want to do is say get all the cars that have a horsepower that is bigger than 100. So we could put greater than 100 here and less than 150. Click in the data, advanced for our criteria range. We want C1 to D2. OK. And now we have all those cars with a horsepower bigger than 100 and less than 150. So as with everything, I encourage you to play around with this advanced filtering tool to see what works and see what doesn't. It can be kind of finicky sometimes, and it can be frustrating to get Excel to give you the results that you're interested in. Play around with it enough, I'm sure that you'll be able to get the hang of it. So good luck with all your Excel ventures, and I hope you join me next time. Bye-bye.